So, should you visit Argentina? Yes. Okay, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> the video's not going to end there. This is going to be five things that I really loved about Argentina and whether or not you should visit Argentina and why. So, it was kind of hard to narrow down a list of things that I loved about Argentina. Because I did love a lot of things about Argentina. But I tried to keep it to five larger categories. And I will mention later some of the smaller things that I loved about Argentina. But the five major things we can start with. And the first one of those things is I really, really loved the design of the cities and how walkable they were and how there was good options for public transportation to get around not just the cities but also ways for me to get outside of the cities either by train or by bus. So I'm from the United States and in a lot of cities in the United States there is um, a bit of a problem with uh, walkability and a lot of neighborhoods in a lot of cities uh, they simply aren't very walkable and if you live out in the suburbs you're you're you definitely need a car you need a car to get done just the normal everyday things that you need to do grocery shopping going to the pharmacy um, things like that so in argentina what i've noticed from the three cities that i stayed in buenos aires um, mendoza and cordoba I noticed that every neighborhood that I was in and the neighborhoods I stayed in ranged, you know, they were all different types of neighborhoods. Some of them were central to the, to the city. Some of them were actually even outside of the city that would be considered suburbs in the United States. But no matter where I was, all the things that I needed were right within walking distance, within a block, two blocks, three or four blocks at the most. And so a pharmacy, um, a grocery store, a butcher shop, a vegetable market, a hardware store, a barber to get my hair cut, um, cafes, restaurants, bars, and anything on the rare occasions where there was something that I would need to get um, and I would need to go further away, I would always be able to access some sort of pretty easy, um, affordable, and reliable public transportation. Whether that was a subway in Buenos Aires, the subte, or a train in Buenos Aires, or in Cordoba and Mendoza, a city bus. And for someone who has grown up in different um, places in the United States, I've lived in different cities that have different levels, varying levels of you know, good to absolutely miserable public transportation and walkability. Um, the fact that everything was so um, densely packed, there was a lot of density in the neighborhoods, meaning that there weren't a lot of, you know, there's no big dead spaces. There's no like an entire block or two square blocks that are just taken up by like a parking garage or a parking lot and you have to walk, you know, seven, eight, ten blocks to get to the nearest, uh, the nearest store or the nearest, you know, pharmacy or vegetable market or something like that. That just didn't seem to be an issue in Argentina. And that was something that I really enjoyed because traveling solo with no car um, and trying to travel on a budget. So, um, you know, not, not taking taxis absolutely everywhere that I go. Um, was was really nice to have those options with public transportation and to have all the things that I needed very close by. When I did want to take a taxi, they were relatively affordable and I wouldn't really have to go that far in the taxi because most of the things that I was that I was you know going to see were close enough that the taxi ride was going to be pretty short. So for me, that's something that I really enjoyed. The second thing that I really, really loved about Argentina was 
the the beauty of the cities and also the natural beauty and I'll explain a little bit in the cities especially like a city like Buenos Aires and Cordoba there are these and Mendoza also I don't want to leave Mendoza out there are there's a lot of beautiful architecture um, there is just a lot of like uh, uh, you you turn a corner and stumble onto a beautiful plaza or a park that um, and that was something that I really really enjoyed when I was walking around the city just being able to see this beautiful architecture being able to see these beautiful plazas it, it made you feel like you wanted to keep walking around the city they're definitely not ugly cities and I have um, I have walked around some ugly cities before and not just the the beauty of the architecture in the cities and the and things like that but also the natural beauty that I was able to see in Argentina just getting a little bit outside of the cities in in Cordoba for example getting a little ways outside of the city out into the Sierra mountains um, in Mendoza getting a little bit of the way outside of the city out into the you know the lush vineyards and the Andes the foothills of the Andes just very very beautiful um, very very beautiful like natural beauty the third thing that I really loved about Argentina was the diversity of culture in Argentina and I didn't really know very much about Argentina before I started to do like some research before I had decided that I was going to take a trip to Argentina and one of the things that really struck me and that I really enjoyed was because Argentina specifically has had a very open uh, policy on immigration since you know back in the, like the late mid to late 1800s just after Argentine independence the Republic has welcomed foreigners and welcomed immigrants and because of this you get a very rich culture that has sort of um, like a melting pot culture that has taken in these immigrants taken in aspects of their culture and it all sort of blends together into be this very rich and very unique Argentine culture. It reminds me a lot of the United States in that way because the United States has also had a long history of immigration and I've mentioned this in some previous videos but in the same way that the United States has taken things and made them sort of like Americanized US versions of these things um, Argentina has done the same thing and they've sort of had a culture that has been built by the blending of different cultures over the years and the decades and the centuries and that's something that I find really interesting but also something that I really loved um, because it's it's just such a unique a unique culture in Argentina and to not just be able to experience that but also to learn about the history of all of that was something that I really really enjoyed because I myself am a bit of a history nerd and that's what I really like to learn about and there's no shortage of um, history and culture to learn about in Argentina but also no shortage of places to go to learn about those things um, one of the the I guess offshoots minor things that I really liked was there are a lot of museums a lot of different um, museums cultural centers and places like that that you can go and learn about specific aspects of Argentine culture a lot of them are free um, and it's just a really great uh, really great opportunity to learn if you if that's what you want to do the fourth thing that I really loved about Argentina is that Argentina is such a large and diverse 
geographically diverse country. Now, I stayed for three months in Argentina, and I stayed in three different cities, Buenos Aires, Córdoba, and Mendoza. And all of those cities are right around the same latitude um, in the fertile, like, farmland band of Argentina in the middle of the country, north, north to south. And even within that band, that climate band, there were a lot of different, um, like, each, three, each of those cities are very different geographically. Buenos Aires is a city that's on the, at the mouth of like a river basin on the east by the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, Cordoba is in the dead center of the country um, in a valley next to a low mountain range. And Mendoza is in the western side of the country in the high desert in the foothills of the Andes Mountains over by Chile. The climates are different, the topography is different, the geography is different, and the culture of all the cities, um, because of that, are very different. And that's not even to mention the other parts, many, many other parts of Argentina that I didn't have a chance to visit, up in the provinces of, say, like Santa Fe or Salta in the north, provinces in the south, um, the Tierra del Fuego and Patagonia and, and the, you know, the, des the desert band um, south of where I was staying. There are beautiful uh, cities like San Carlos de Bariloche. It's a beautiful city nestled up in the mountains with all these beautiful mountain lakes. There are beautiful beach cities on the east coast, Puerto Madryn and uh, Mar del Plata, which I wasn't able to visit. And at first, I, I sort of felt like I was really missing out because I wasn't able to go see all these, these places. But what I realized was that's actually a good thing because it gives me a reason to go back to Argentina. It gives me a reason to go back and to enjoy some of the things that I really love about Argentina, but to do it in a new city or in a new province, in a new area where I'm gonna experience new things as well. So the fact that Argentina is such a large and geographically diverse country, it gives, there's just so many opportunities to, for things to see and do in Argentina. And I think that's, that's great. It's one of the things that I really loved. And, the last thing that I really loved about Argentina was how friendly the people, the people are in Argentina. And this one, I don't know, I can't, I can't say it enough how friendly everybody was to me in Argentina. Now, this is, of course, not every single person I met in Argentina was friendly. I did come across a few grumpy people in Argentina. It's not like the entire country is just going to be your best friend, but the amount of times that I would just randomly strike up a conversation with someone, you know, sitting at a bus stop or, or um, you know, uh, at, a, at a cafe or something like that, and end up, you know, laughing with this person and having a, having a real nice conversation with them, it, it was a lot. It happened very often. And me being someone who, you know, I'm from Chicago. I grew up in the Midwest, where the uh, in the United States, where the uh, the stereotype is Midwest nice, where people are very nice to each other, um, for the most part. And in Argentina, I found that it is really kind of the same thing. I've just, I really, really enjoyed meeting people there. And even just having like a short conversation with someone afterwards, having them say, oh, here, you know, take my, uh, take my, let me add you on WhatsApp. And then, you know, if you have any questions or, you know, you need help with anything, just hit me up on WhatsApp. Or, you know, having a conversation with someone for just a few minutes and, you know, asking them about, you know, they, they ask me about who I am and why I'm here. And I ask them about, you know, are they, where they're from and, and then all of a sudden they're giving me a ride, you know, into the city so I don't have to take the bus. Things like this, um, 
they happened quite often when I was in Argentina. Um, you know, I had an Airbnb host who, uh, who offered to pick me up from the airport and then drive me to the bus terminal after my stay was done. I had an Airbnb host who took me out to, you know, have drinks with him and his friends, um, just to sort of welcome me to the city. And that was really, really nice. Um, it was really nice to meet people who were so, um, open, but also so like willing to be patient with me and my kind of terrible Spanish. My Spanish is getting better and I can get by in a conversation, but a lot of times I don't understand what people are saying, specifically because they talk too fast or the Argentine accent is kind of hard to, uh, to understand. Um, but people were very willing to like talk slowly and enunciate and basically talk to me like I'm a little child uh, so that I can understand exactly what's going on. And that was really, really nice. People had a lot of patience with, you know, the dumb gringo. And um, yeah, that's, I can't say it enough how much I really liked the people uh, that I met in Argentina. So those are the things, those are the top five things that I loved about Argentina. And a few little things that I also loved about Argentina, just little minor things that maybe like honorable mention. One is coffee. Now, if you're a coffee lover, you're gonna love Argentina. And I am a coffee lover. And Argentina has a very, very rich um, coffee culture and attachment to coffee. There are cafes everywhere. They all serve um, various kinds of Italian style coffee drinks, uh, cappuccinos, lattes, um, espresso, and the, the quality of the coffee is also very good. And the, it's not just that there are cafes everywhere, but like, for example, there are, um, the gas station game in Argentina is really great. The amount of times I saw a gas station where you go in and there's a whole cafe in there and not just like a little, you know, uh, coffee machine right next to the, the soda fountain like you would see in a gas station in the United States. I mean a whole cafe where they will make you, they will have like a barista who will make you a, a cappuccino or an espresso. And they're actually pretty good most of the time. And it was really nice having these sort of like gas station cafe oases in the middle of the city, especially for example in Cordoba and in Mendoza when I was staying there in like during a heat wave. I mean in Mendoza, there were about two and a half weeks in a row where the temperature was like 40 degrees Celsius, like 100 degrees Fahrenheit high every day for two and a half weeks in a row. And when you're going around in the city and, you know, walking around out in the, in the heat and filming like I was doing, it was always very nice to find one of these, these gas station cafes. Or it was nice and cool and air conditioned inside. I could go in and get a nice, like, cold bottle of water and also have, like, coffee. It was just very, very nice. So the coffee culture, I really love. The gas station cafes, I also really love. And um, I mentioned this in videos about Mendoza and videos about um, some of the neighborhoods in Buenos Aires, but I really like that there are a lot of trees in the cities. At least the cities that I visited, lots and lots of trees. Um, it's something that makes the city feel like, well, it's cooler because there's shade everywhere, but also it just makes you feel, um, it makes you sort of lose track that you're in this like city full of asphalt and concrete when there's just plenty of gigantic trees around. This was especially true in Mendoza and especially true in um, a lot of the neighborhoods in Buenos Aires. Uh, that's something that I really loved. One of the other minor things that I didn't want to mention um, was the affordability. And the reason I didn't want to mention this is because it really only applies to you if you are a tourist. and. If you are a tourist, you are 
going to be able to have a very nice stay in Argentina for not very much money. But that is unfortunately because of the economic situation in Argentina, which is very hard on uh, people who actually live in Argentina. People who live in Argentina are struggling with the economic situation, with the inflation and the devaluation of the peso. And it's for that exact reason that you, coming from Europe or the United States with a euros or dollars in your pocket, are going to be able to, you know, have such an affordable stay. So I didn't want to mention it as one of the main things that I loved about Argentina, because in the back of my mind, while I was having an affordable stay in Argentina, I realized that, that Argentines are really struggling. And I've seen videos where people, you know, the entire video is, you can live like a king on the US dollar in Argentina. And I f think they're really gross. And when I see them, it just makes me feel like dirty after having watched it. You know, like I need to go take a shower. It's just a very slimy kind of a video. And I don't really like it um, because it's very tone deaf and it doesn't, it's people who, who don't realize the reason why your your dollar goes so far in Argentina. Uh, but I did want to mention it because this video is also about should you visit, Ar visit Argentina and why. And if you are from Europe or the United States or somewhere else and you want to visit Argentina, I think you should. And one of the reasons why you should is because it will be quite affordable for you. But when you do visit, Please try to remember that the reason why it is so affordable is because um, Argentina has a lot of economic problems that are definitely affecting the people there in a very negative way. And just be, be cognizant of that and try not to be too much of a jerk about it. So I guess what I said at the very beginning of the video, should you visit Argentina, yes. It still stands. You definitely should visit Argentina. And you should visit Argentina for, well, the five reasons that I love Argentina. If you think you would love those things too, then you should definitely visit Argentina. Also, um, I think Argentina is a place that a lot of, specifically people from the United States, don't really think of as uh, when they think of places that they want to go take a vacation in Latin America specifically. Um, I, I don't see a lot of people um, planning vacations to Argentina. A lot of people in the United States that I've talked to, they end up going to Mexico or they go to somewhere in the Caribbean, maybe Brazil, um, but not, not Argentina. And I think that that is you're missing out. You really are missing out. And one of the reasons why I think Argentina might be good for someone specifically from the United States is because, like I mentioned, the cultures, the way they developed, are pretty similar. You know, Argentina feels a lot more like the United States um, than, I, than I had expected it to. The amount of um, diversity because of immigration, and also like there, there's a misconception I think about Argentina that it is not as developed or industrialized as it actually is and it really really is Argentina is a huge industrial powerhouse of a country um, it is like you're not going to notice any kind of difference between staying in a major city in the United States and staying in a major city in Argentina and I think because of that the amount of development and the ratio sort of between how developed the country is and how affordable the country is to visit as a tourist, um, you're just not going to find any place better than Argentina. There's, there's, I, I really don't think you will, uh, not just in South America, but probably anywhere in the world. So it's definitely some place to visit. One thing to note, if you are visiting as a tourist is, well, there are people who speak English in Argentina and there are people who 
will understand a good amount of English in Argentina, you will need to know some Spanish to really get the most out of it. If you were in Buenos Aires, for example, and you stuck to the touristy neighborhoods and you really only did the tourist activities, you could get away with not really speaking any Spanish. Uh, but if you really want to uh, enjoy your stay a lot more, learn Spanish for even just a few months. Just pick up enough Spanish to be conversational in the very, very simplest of conversations, and it will go very, very far for you. Because like I mentioned, people in Argentina are very, very patient, or they had been very patient with me. When I would open a conversation with um, Lo siento, porque mi español es un poco malo. Like, my español is a little bad. Uh, Todavía estoy aprendiendo. I'm still learning. They would immediately try to, to help me and try to explain things in simple ways and just be very patient with me in my bad Spanish. So even just having a little bit of Spanish will help you go. It will go a long way in Argentina. It will help you enjoy the country and it's wonderful people um, a lot more than if you know zero Spanish. So, um, you know, download Duolingo, it's free. That's literally how I learned um, the Spanish that I learned to go to Argentina. I did Duolingo and I practiced speaking Spanish with anybody who would be willing to practice speaking Spanish with me. So I think that's it. I wanted to do this video as sort of a farewell to Argentina because you know we are leaving and I really enjoyed my time there in Argentina and I want people who are, are from Europe from the United States who maybe are thinking about taking a vacation and they've never considered Argentina it's not even on their list to see this video potentially and rethink that decision because it is fantastic country with beautiful beautiful things to see and do wonderful people and and you're just never you're never gonna have enough time in your entire life to see everything and do everything that there is to do in Argentina so the opportunities to see and do new things are pretty much always gonna be there with Argentina so keep that in mind the next time you're planning a vacation, um, Argentina, as far as I'm concerned, should be right up at the top of your list. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, my little ramble, and to Argentina, and to the people of Argentina, and everybody who I met in Argentina who was so nice to me, um, you all know who you are, and uh, I, I'm really grateful. I really am thankful for for uh, how nice you were to me in Argentina. This is not goodbye. I'm not saying goodbye, Argentina. I'm saying hasta luego.